delicious, hot or cold, served with a jug of cream, English custard, or a mug of tea, Bakewell Tart is a traditional, timeless British classic. Winston? Winston? Come back with that leg of lamb. All good recipes have a great history to them, and that certainly goes for the dish that I'm making today, the Bakewell Tart. Now, let's not confuse Bakewell Tart with Bakewell Pudding. Bakewell Tart's like a variant on the Bakewell Pudding and was created, invented in the 20th century, whereas Bakewell Pudding, well, that's been around since medieval times. Both the tart and the pudding are associated with the quaint little market town called Bakewell in Derbyshire in the UK. Both recipes are supposed to have come from there. The Bakewell pudding is a beautiful, delicious, buttery puff pastry on the base, and then a layer of jam, and then it's sort of a, an almond egg custard that goes on the top. Nothing like the Bakewell tart. Baker is like the old, original Bakewell pudding shop, and Bloomer's original Bakewell puddings both claim to have the original secret recipe. And trust me, both of them are amazing. Tourists flock there from all over the country, especially over weekends. And we're not going to get involved in which one has the original recipe and which one is best, because we're making the Bakewell tart. Bakewell tart actually has a beautiful buttery pastry, a short crust pastry, and it has flour, butter, egg, and powdered sugar in there. They all go in the food processor, whiz them round, and that makes a beautiful paste. The Bakewell Tart came along in the 1900s and this beautiful almond sponge replaced that almond custard from the Bakewell pudding and gone was the buttery puff paste. Instead, this delicious short crust pastry. Sometimes it's easier to actually refrigerate the dough first, but if you're careful, you can actually start rolling it out right away plenty of flour on the table to stop it sticking and then we want to roll it out to about a quarter inch thickness then we're going into this flute tin and push your fingers around the edges to get right into those corners Once you've pushed it into the corners, then we take the knife and run it around the top. This takes off all the excess pastry that we don't need. Now, it's looking messy, but we're going to make it look beautiful. So now we go around the edges, a little flour on the fingers, and then just squeeze and make it all the same thickness all the way around. Trust me, it's worth it. See? Beautiful. Now we've got to do something called blind baking. And blind baking is when we actually put baking beans in there, put it in the oven and part cook the sides. If we try and put the frangipan and jam in there now, well, it'll be raw on the bottom. So we just prick the bottom with a fork, make some holes in there. And that's gonna help it cook nice and even. And then we've got to put the baking beans in. We start off with some parchment fold it in half, turn it sideways and fold it in half again and then start folding in and folding in and eventually we can go to the center like this and now just tear and we get a nice circle that then goes in the bottom. You may have to rewind and watch that again if you've never done it before. Next, I've got some ceramic baking beans. 
they're fairly expensive, but if you buy them, they last forever. If you don't have them and you don't want to go and buy them, then you can use rice in there or, you know, dried beans or something. I remember being at Buckingham Palace. Actually, no, I was at Balmoral, and I was making this bakewell. And I got to this stage here, and it was in the tray, ready to go in the oven. And Prince Philip came down into the kitchen. And he was chatting about what he wanted to take out for the barbecue that night. And suddenly he saw this, and I think just out of the corner of his eye or something, he thought they were berries. So he picked a handful out, and he was just about to eat them. I just got in in time. No, Your Royal Highness, no, no, no. Uh, they're ceramic baking beans. I mean, they would have taken his teeth out. Into the oven, 350. We're just going to colour the outside and the bottom too. About 15 minutes. While the pastry's blind baking, we can start getting the other ingredients ready. It's a layer of jam on the bottom, and then the frangipan goes on the top. The jam that I'm using is strawberry jam. And when I made this for the royal family, we'd use strawberry jam most of the time. The queen would go picking berries uh, in the cages at, at Balmoral and bring them up to the kitchen and we'd make jams and they were perfect for this. Prince Philip, he was a huge fan of um, plums. He had Victoria plums growing in the gardens at Balmoral and so we'd make a plum jam. So sometimes when he had a lunch party, we'd use the plum jam on the bottom. It doesn't really matter, your favourite. You can use apricot jam, peach jam, anything you want in there. Uh, but I think the traditional recipe is using strawberry jam. The frangipan was really easy to make and tastes absolutely delicious. So for the frangipan, we actually start off with butter and sugar. And the butter and sugar go into the mixer and we just cream those for a little while until smooth and buttery. Next, we'll scrape down the sides. It helps having the butter at room temperature when it goes in, because it creams much quicker and faster. So then we add the egg and the almond meal, almond flour, and then almond extract. This, I use the Nielsen Massey one, I put a link in the description if you want to get some. If, if you just want to use regular almond flavoring, you can, but this is the best, promise you, love this one. The almond flavor is absolutely amazing in there. You don't need a lot, just a couple of drops, because it really is concentrated. Mix all that together. And there we've got our frangipan. Once the tart has gone all golden brown around the edges, then we can take out carefully the baking beans. Just be careful you don't drag up the pastry from the bottom. Now it's gonna go back in the oven for about five more minutes just to dry out the top. Now we've got a gorgeously cooked tart shell. So we'll take the jam and put that into the bottom. It's almost ready for the oven now. It just needs classically, traditionally, flaked almonds sprinkled on the top. But my recipe, the one I use all the time, I put amaretti biscuits on. You can get these from places like World Market, all those good stores. I put a link to them in the description if you want to order these ones. I take the amaretti cookies and literally just push them and they collapse. They add a new dimension to the bakewell tart. You know, it adds the almond flavor, which are obviously in the, um, these biscottis, these amaretti cookies. And it also adds that nice crunch texture too. A nice sprinkle on there. Then into the oven for about 20 minutes till it's golden brown and just slightly firm to touch. Once it's come out of the oven, we let it cool a bit, let it set. 
let that jam set up, let that frangipan set up so it's nice and crispy crunchy on the top. Then all we have to do is finish it with a little powdered sugar, icing sugar in the UK, right? As if things weren't complicated enough with the bake walls, there's actually another one, a cherry bake wall. You may have heard of that one. Mr. Kipling, the UK's largest cake manufacturer in the UK, made that one famous, his cherry bake walls. I'll let you into a secret. At Buckingham Palace, whenever the Queen was traveling and she had all of her pastry chefs with her, Mr. Kipling would supply the cakes at the palace. The cherry bake walls were the most popular ones. The chefs loved them. Exceedingly good cakes. Even we said that. <laughs> this for me is more traditional. I know I've put my little um, twist to it by adding those beautiful amaretti cookies, but you've got to admit, this is a beautiful, beautiful pudding dessert. I love the crunchy pastry, the crunchy topping as well. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up if you can, subscribe if you haven't already, and tell your friends, share the video with your friends. I love making these traditional classics, dishes I made at Buckingham Palace. Bakewell tart, traditional bakewell tart. Okay, with my little twist on it. I never get tired of making it and I never get tired of eating it. See you again soon.